And this time I'm looking at a Denafrips Athena preamp. It's a rather indulgent audiophile design, 18 kilograms, but it's dead. Well, visually it's very clean and simple, just a few buttons to select the channels, and a volume knob that's actually a rotary encoder. And whilst on the minimalist theme, there's only three feet on this. And being a preamp, you do expect a lot of input sockets around the back, but this is rather a lot. Balanced and single-ended. And I'm sure that's plenty of outputs for everyone, isn't it? <laughs> well, at nearly €2,000 this is aimed at the audio file market for sure, but I want to see, why has it gone wrong? Good start to put the power in, and see if it draws any current. Oh wow! Well, that's a dead short circuit, and the bulb's doing their job. Which I'd rather that than it blow up in my face. Well the analogue stuff's at the top of this, and it suggests that the power supply lives in the bottom. I'm going to take the lid off anyway, just to get some clues. These cap heads appear to take a 2.5mm hex key, just about. Well, get a load of that. <laughs> now that's what I call audiophile indulgence. Well, I've not skimped in here. These are Elner Silmic 2s. These aren't cheap caps. <laughs> My God, there's a lot of them. This is where the transformer tap ins. It's sort of centre tap 16 volts each side, twice. Why use a bridge rectifier when you can make one out of individual diodes? Yeah. There's a TL431 regulator there feeding these MOSFETs. Wow. <laughs> They're taking this seriously. And of course, same both sides. And I'd say about 50% of this board's dedicated to filtering the power supplies. <laughs> well, it's very neatly designed to shine the put lid on it. I've not used cheap relays either. These are Onron G6S2s. And each one of these is switching a small step on the volume knob. Or rather, steps attenuator. This volume control is that fancy. There's a custom chip driving it, which is using these line driver chips here to drive each one of these relays. <laughs> it's a bit overkill. But if you've outgrown the potentiometer, I guess this is what you want. If you want to make a preamp expensive, this is probably how you do it. They're also using relays to switch the inputs. This is a bit more conventional to be honest. And no surprise the outputs are switched in the same way. I'm guessing this is another regulated dual rail supply. Because there's one over this side as well. And I'm assuming this is the input buffer amps. Remember this is balanced inputs as well as single ended. I don't know what the design is but it probably turns it into a single ended input for switching. And then back to balanced. I presume these are the balanced output amplifiers. All discrete transistors. Nice. I'm not sure this discrete stuff's any better than an op amp. <laughs> They're showing off. Well, I'm pretty sure the short circuit's not in here. Let's get this bottom off. I still don't want to come off. <laughs> More screws. Probably a good idea to under these ribbon cables. We don't want those getting ripped out. I don't know if I need to take this off or not, but I'm going to unscrew it. Just it might slacken things up a bit for me. I've got a choice, I either unsold all the wires at the back or I take this cover off. I think all these sockets are going to come undone. At least I can undo the cables now. It's still trapped. I think you just have to be a bit uh, brave. There we go. And that's revealed two layers of magnetic shielding. Wow. <laughs> well, finally, we found the main power supply board buried in the bottom with two toroidal transformers. I think this is the power supply for the analog section or the dual rail analog stuff. Note the thinner windings on here. Compared to this one's got thick windings on there. And it's labelled up down there, AC6V7. I think this is for like 5 volt rails. And there's a lovely CNC machine block here, but we've got no idea what it's for. A mystery. I spot this block here, this is actually a switch mode power supply. Wide input range and gives 5 volt out. So there's three big things here taking the mains in, which all could be faulty. But which one? So we've got a dead short here. Just pop that socket back on. 
I'm going to try and power it up, see if we can see anything burning. Got the thermal camera on here and it's not seeing anything. There's nothing really going on. That's probably because our voltage is down to zero. Yeah. We're going to have to do this the old fashioned way, process of elimination. I'm going to disconnect each transformer one at a time, see if we can make the short disappear. I'll start with this one. We'll try that. No different. I'll do this one as well now. So I'm hoping it's not a transformer because they're quite expensive. Try that. <laughs> okay, looks like a bad transformer. If you measure the primaries on this, 4.6 ohms on this one, should be exactly the same on here. And it is. If we measure the primary of this one, the bottom one, I'm expecting similar. Nah, uh, 1.2 ohms. What about this one? 0.6. There's our problem. Primary shorted. Typical construction of these is they wind the primary windings on the inside first and then put the foil and then the outer windings on the outside. Repairing the secondary is sort of doable. Repairing the primary, not really viable. Needs a new transformer. Well, I assume you get the transformer out from underneath, but let's get this magnetic shielding off. Problem solved with these before I took the bolt out, never mind. Just to check there's not a problem on the secondary side, I'm just going to put these crocodile clips on here and stick a bit of DC in there. Well, that seems very happy. Just swap those over just in case there's a dodgy bridge rectifier arrangement. Well, it all looks happy to me. Well, it appears this provides a constant 5 volts, so it's on standby. So I've seen these burn out before, they're sitting there cooking. But where am I going to get one of these from? 6.7 volt, 9 amp secondary. Hmm, it's quite a slim line as well. So I've got a bit of online shopping to do. Wish me luck. I've had some good fortune. I've been in touch with Alvin at Vinshine Audio, who are the global distributors for Denifrips, and he sorted me out with a replacement. Cheers! Now it's not brand new, but it'll do. And if you're wondering what the correct readings are when you measure the primary on a good one, I'll show you. Good winding measures 6 ohms. And that'll be both of them. The reason this one died is the voltage in the UK is too high for it. In the UK we're running about 240 volts, maybe a bit higher sometimes. A lot of this equipment is only rated for 230 volts, which is probably saturating it, making it pull too much current and overheat. Fortunately on the test bench I can turn mine down. So to install it, I'm going to pop the bolt back in and offer it up onto the threads. Now to solder the wires in. Better retrieve that bit of solder that fell off. There we go.
Before we start putting it all together, just going to try it. Make sure nothing's shorting on the chassis. That's good. Moment of truth. Beautiful. Just check we've got the 5 volt rail. And yes. Well, I think that's a good sign. So I think we're okay to put this back together. So a lot of screws. The first sheet of magnetic shielding on. Just like that. The second one on top. Then pop these screws in, 12 of them no less. Put the top board back on. Now I can put this one back in. Got the rest of the bottom cover on as well. That's lucky. <laughs> Put the rear cover on. Remember, I have to bend it over these sockets. It's a bit worryingly hard just to push it. Hopefully this just slides under there nicely. Mm, I did say hopefully. <laughs> well I reckon it should work now. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> Those relays clicking. Just going to connect it up for a better look at what's going on there. That is rather cool. <laughs> but it appears to be working okay. All these inputs. All good. Well, it's looking like it's doing what it should, so I'm going to put the lid on. There we go. Beautiful. So that's another one done of what have we learned. You should run these at the right voltage. If you are putting too many volts in, I recommend you get a step down transformer. You might always be able to get the spares like I did. Catch you next time.